Today, I wanna to talk about yeast and where you can find information about them so that you can make better homebrew. Let's get started. In front of me, I have a whole bunch of yeast. I mean, I collect them because I use a lot of yeast for brewing. And I have had the experience to know information about them that will allow me to use them properly. However, not everybody has that because you might be a new brewer. The truth is, yeast are all very different. Yeast have different requirements that they need as far as nutrition and temperature ranges and various things in that topic. They also just have different alcohol tolerances. And there's a lot of information that you don't always get from picking up a yeast packet. This yeast right here is the Lauven 71B. Says it on it right in front of me. Now, looking at the packet, it has some information on the back about how to rehydrate it, but it doesn't tell you much other than that. So here's what we're gonna start by doing. The easiest thing to do is to literally get on to Google or any search engine itself and look up said yeast. So we're gonna try that real fast. Let's look up the Lauven 71B, and it had a couple things there. You, you saw some other search results, but the top one, I've done a lot of research here, is from Lalamond, which is the parent company that creates this yeast. And it, this is the basis for all your information. You can see here, I'm looking at their website, and it tells me about this yeast. It says, Lauven 71B has been isolated and selected by INRA, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna read all that stuff, but you can. It, but it tells me information about this yeast. It tells me the origins of it specifically, which you might not care about, that's fine. And it tells me some important information. So like the Lauven 71B has some specific things that you don't really want to ferment with it. So that's like, they kind of talk about that here. It, it can metabolize malic acid. Again, not trying to get too deep with this. My point is it talks about it right there. So then I'm gonna scroll down a little bit because I'm looking for specifically, I wanna know how much alcohol content this can generally ferment up to. Now I don't see that on here. I'm kind of looking, but I don't see it. So I'm gonna go down to technical data sheet specifically with this, clicked on it, and here's what I have in front of me. Again, the information that they said, but then also we've got a bunch of other stuff. There's a kind of cool flavor and aroma wheel here that talks about the specific flavors and aromas that this yeast will often put out. So this one, the Lauven 71B likes to put off red fruit and ester, which is its own little thing. Stone fruit, tropical fruit, you can kind of see that there. Tell us some quick facts. This is, these are some great grape variety pairings. Cabernet Franc, I can't say that one, Grenache, uh, Pinot Gris, so on and so forth. Different wine styles. Aromas, we have some tropical fruit and banana flavor. Here's where we are looking for that alcohol tolerance. It's, it says up to 14%. However, yeast can generally, when they're fermenting in a healthy manner, can't, they can go above their cap. We have a fermentation range, which is your temperature range to stay in. There's some other stuff here that we can talk about these properties. Again, a lot of this is very in-depth. You might not care about, but the basic ones that you're seeing here, the temperature range, the alcohol tolerance, some general flavors that you might be looking for, you can find all with a quick Google search. Now I can go backwards a little bit and that's that's super deep. Let's say I just wanna quickly find out the alcohol tolerance. Of course, I'll just go Lauven 71B. Um, let's do alcohol tolerance. And simple as that, I found out my information 14% just like that. I didn't have to go to the deep technical uh, sheet to find that information. You can literally do this for any yeast. Let's pick another one right, randomly here. Uh, here we go, I got another Lauven. Let's look up Lauven, QA2, oh, QA23, and they have some things here. So if I just look this up, it pulls me towards the Lalamond you know, same website as before, but let's say I just want to figure out the temperature range. Temperature range. Hey, look, simple as that. I pulled it up. Lauven QA23, temperature range is 57 to 82 Fahrenheit or 14 to 28 C. Let's say I want to figure out that alcohol tolerance. Same thing, alcohol tolerance, pulled it up, 16%. So quick Google searches will, will help you out with this. And you can do this for any yeast. 
Um, some of them are more clear than others. You might find on some packets, sometimes they have more information. For example, um, if you find a liquid yeast, a lot of liquid yeast have information on the back. This is the Hothead Kvike yeast. And on the back of this one, it talks about all the information I wanted to see. Um, the temperature range is back here. The alcohol tolerance is. We have some other information, flocculation, which is generally um, as yeast are finished, they will start to fall to the bottom, flocculate to the bottom. So they should theoretically flocculate all at the bottom quicker. Attenuation is a beer term we often use to say how much sugar is going to be consumed by the yeast. This says 75 to 82% of the uh, sugars will be consumed by the yeast. When it comes to things like wine or mead, all of the sugars there are generally fermentable. So if the yeast can eat it, they will. Often in beer, there are sugars that are not consumable by the yeast. So that's where we get some of this stuff here. But on the back of this is super nice, super simple. I have all my information for my liquid yeast. There are literally hundreds of different yeast you can use for beer, mead, wine, cider. I mean, everything you could ever want. And the fun thing about yeast is because they are so different, you can use a bunch of different ones on different things and get great results. There is not necessarily one yeast for every single brew. And I know some people are saying, well, you should only ever use this yeast on this brew because that's the, the best, which might be true. There are certain yeasts that do really well with certain flavors. However, you have lots of options. So when you're trying to pick a yeast, my recommendation to you is, is to use the resources that the internet provides, which is often through Facebook um, groups and Reddit and my Discord and all these other brewing discords for the experience people have had. Because yes, you can go through and try to find a yeast um, by yourself. It can just, it can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming to try and look through all of those technical sheets to figure out, well, I'm really trying to make this um, whatever specific wine or I'm trying to, I'm making a Cabernet Sauvignon wine. Unless you have information before this, you're not really gonna know what kind of yeast to use. So kind of going through and saying, what yeasts do well with Cabernet Sauvignon um, grapes? You can pretty easily decide to go from there. Now, I personally make a lot of mead. I don't, I do some with beer and um, I, you know, do some with wine as well. So I'm not gonna speak all to those things, but for mead specifically, I have accumulated, I've done a giant test to figure out what yeast work well for mead in general. Now I'm gonna link you to this very large um, looking paper that has all the information about 20 different yeasts that we, I used in this circumstance. It also talks about their technical sheets, their alcohol tolerances, the information about them, and even at the very end of that sheet is a what yeast goes with what best brew. So let's say if you're a mead maker and you're trying to make more um, tropical fruited meads, you might find that, oh, I need to find a good yeast for that. Well, I've tried to pare down the yeast based off of their technical sheet in my experience and pair them with the style. So you can find that below and some information there. Yeast are super fun. And once you get going with it and you get the experience, they're way less scary. At the beginning, I encourage you just to do some Googling and some asking and ask some questions. Hey, I'm making a specific wine. What should I use? What kind of yeast should I use? I would caution you to not take one person's advice as everything. Just like right now, I don't think that my advice is the end all be all, but I don't feel like I'm giving you any bad advice right now. I'm just trying to give you, tell you to, to look more into the things you're, uh, you're trying to make. Maybe get a few different answers and then go from there, but use the right yeast. The wrong yeast, even with the best ingredients in the world, might not give you the specific flavor profile you want or ferment as well as you want. And that's unfortunate because that's money and time that you've lost. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has helped. If you would like to support the channel, it's as easy as hitting that like button and subscribing. I have a lot more content coming your way and I hope you're excited to see all of that. So go make some mead, wine, beer, cider, 
hard seltzer, whatever you like, and I'll see you in the future. Cheers. Cheers.